Hello, this is Rocketman Dan and today we're going to be landing on the Moon. But first we're just going to upgrade a couple of facilities. So first we're going to upgrade mission control just over here. I'm going to press square and this lets us have flight planning. I'm also going to upgrade the tracking station. This will give us patch conics. And patch conics is great because it lets you plan manoeuvres. It's really great. We'll, we'll talk about that more once we're up there ready to do it. I'm also going to upgrade the astronaut complex just here. And this lets us do EVAs whilst in space. There we go. Let's go and accept a mission. There we go. Explore the moon. Get 51,000. Oh yeah, that's great. Explore them on. Let's see if there's anything else to accept. Science data from space around Kerbin. Yeah, that sounds good to me. There we go, we've got a couple of missions now. Let's go to the R&D department. And uh, get a couple of new parts, shall we? There we go. So what we're going to get is these here. I'll just explain these first ones here. We'll get many fuel tanks and other things, but the most important thing on this one here is those external fuel ducts. And they allow us to do asparagus staging. And I'll show you what I mean in the VAB. So let's just uh, get those. There we go. And we're going to want some solar panels as well for this extended journey. There we go. Solar panels and lights. Might make it easier for you to see. And we've still got a little bit left. So what we'll get is these struts. Struts just help keep everything stable. There we go. Okay, let's get in the VAB. And if you're not interested in seeing the build, I'll leave a little timestamp on there for when we're about ready to launch. So first we're going to pick a command pod. Then we're going to get a science collector. We talked about these in the last episode. Really useful things. And a parachute, obviously. We'll stick a couple of science experiments on the pod there. As always, just keep them tucked in there. Going to want a heat shield, obviously. And we'll just bring that down to about 100 again. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. It's still probably too much, but better too much than not enough. We'll have a decoupler on there as well. TD12 stack decoupler, 1.25 meter. Great. And we're also going to put on a Science Junior again, and we're going to be jettisoning it again because we don't need it. And we're going to put on a very small liquid fuel tank, the smallest to do, in fact. There we go. The FLT 100. And on that, we're going to put on a Terrier. That's great great that is. You're probably thinking that's not enough to land with, but I'll show you more soon. Just going to add a little bit more science on here. I'm rotating this by just pressing right on the directional pad. There we go. And you probably won't need as many batteries as me because I'll be bringing extra lights just so you can actually see what I'm doing. I'll put those on in. I think I'll put four of those on, I think, yeah. That should definitely be enough. And a couple of solar panels as well. well. We'll add a few more soon. Now because we've still only got the small landing legs, we're going to just need to uh, do this right. And we can test this in, in the VAB. So we're going to pop these radial decouplers on. Just there, they look about even. And now, this is probably way too much fuel, but if you're inexperienced, having too much fuel is never a bad sign, is it? 
So we're just going to put those on like that. I'm actually going to use the move tool and just bring them down even more than that. Because the landing legs we've got are very small. And the uh, they don't quite reach past that terrier engine. So if these radial tanks reach past the engine, then the legs will as well. So we'll put these on in double symmetry. And if you see it's going on this one over here, just how it works. But we're putting them on like this as well to give us a wide base to land on. The wider the base, oh, they're not even, are they? The wider the base, the less likely you are to tip over. So they're great, just like that. See, that, that'll be his little lander, but those um, radial tanks aren't actually feeding into that engine at the moment because there's nothing providing fuel there. There's no cross feed. So what we want to do is just go in to... Um, fuel tanks and this is what I was talking about earlier these external fuel ducts and what we're going to do is I'm still in two times radial symmetry I'm going to start it on the thing I want the fuel coming from I'm going to press X and then drag it over here and click it onto the part I want the fuel going to see and it's done it on both sides there and this will mean all the fuel starts draining out of these radial tanks first, draining into this smaller tank and out the engine. And then once we're finished with those, we can jettison those and still even have a little bit of fuel left. So let's um, go on aerodynamics. And if you just got the struts, just like I did, and if you go into settings, turn on advanced tweakables. Now, when you press square on a part like this, you'll get this little option here to have auto strut and what you want to do is just auto strut it. I'm just doing it to the heaviest part but it depends on your build really to how you want to do it and also I'm going to stick a few more solar panels on just so the sun could maybe catch us from all different angles when we're in space there we go yeah i think that's plenty we've got a couple on the side there a couple there that's brilliant we still don't need an aerial they're, they're not very useful if you know you're definitely coming back to kerbin also because youtube compresses the videos makes them darker i want to stick some lights on mine you don't need these lights if you don't want them that is well this will help you see me whilst i'm in space especially if there's some kind of uh, eclipse as well. I'm going to use the rotate tool. I'm going to select the part. And I'm just tapping left, see if that works. There we go. Just rotate them down a bit just so I can see my craft. And these are the low power ones. They don't shine very far, but they don't take as much power. I'm just going to pop a couple of these high powered ones on. That are great for when you're coming in and it's just a little bit too dark they shine on the floor where you're about to land and you can just see how far away from the floor you're going to be let's also add a transfer stage shall we and we're going to add a decoupler TD12 decoupler and a 400 fuel tank there we go, that should be enough. Now if you're wondering, oh, I've got this part, how do I get rid of it? it? It won't go away. Just go on over to this panel and press X again. See, it goes away. I want the 400 fuel tank. I'm going to put this on with another Terrier engine. This machine can be done quite cheaply. Now I'm just going to select the root part, which is a command pod. Hold R2 and press up on the right analog stick and just, just make it go up a bit. There we go. So this craft's going to be decently long. Get another decoupler. And this time we're going to add some 800 fuel tanks. See, so they just 
keep going up, doubling in size. There we go. I'm going to put a swivel on this one. This is going to be our first fully liquid fueled ascent vehicle. And also, I'm just going to copy that and copy it again. There we go. Let's add some radial decouplers. About there should be fine. And we'll get these these ones here. Try and put them on there nice and level. Yeah, that's about right. Just going to move them downwards. You've seen me do this before. I'm also going to add some more radial decouplers. Just just there I think and add these ones but I'm going to be taking these engines off of these ones on the right hand side from this point of view I'm going to take these engines off and replace them with the Reliant engines they've got more thrust and we'll be getting rid of this stage quicker anyway this will be the first stage to go. There, just like that, see? Let's add some aerodynamic nose cones. Oh, that's great. And now I want to show you a little trick with the fuel pipes. See, what we want to do is we want to be shedding weight all the time. So we want the fuel to drain out of these tanks into these tanks whilst they're all burning simultaneously. So these will drain first and then these will drain second. So what we want to do, we want these outward tanks to drain into the central tank. There, just like that. Just make sure it's gone on on the other side as well, yep. Yeah. And then we want these first set that's going to be released want to do that to that stage just there so all the time these will drain we'll drop them and then we'll still have these three that are full then these two outward ones will drain and we'll have the central stage full maximizing our delta v what we're also going to do is just add some little fins just like that remember try and stay away from anything with dual symmetry on because it will revert it back oh yeah that's great I'm also just going to do some strutting as well it's nice to do it with the strutter in this editor just like this because the more parts you add the more the engine on the game has got to work uh, the physics engine the more parts it's got to calculate for so if we can auto strut, it saves us on the FPS, which on the PS4 can be a little bit slow at times, especially with the more parts you use. There we go. Now let's just sort out this staging. So to start off with, we want all these bottom engines firing at once, all firing in unison. Then, hang on, let's have a say, zoom in a bit, eh? Want these ones to decouple first. Then we want these ones to decouple. Then we want it to decouple from there and that engine to start. There we go. We want that to decouple and that engine to start. Oh, no, not those ones. That engine there and that to start at the same time. There we go, then the radial tanks to go away, then the command pod, then the parachute. Not bad in seven stages. Uh, let's just set some command groups again like we did before. Uh, so for brakes, I'm going to put this reusable science on it. Um, crew report and temperature. And for RCS, I'm just going to get it to collect all that data. Saves a lot of messing about. 
and I'll also remove the mono propellant because we don't need it and it's just weighing us down okay I think this is about ready to launch and this will definitely get us to the moon and back again with more than likely probably plenty of fuel to spare so okay let's get to the launch pad okay here we are in the launch pad ready to go to the moon I'm going to turn on SAS and start burning and when I hit about 100 meters per second I'm going to turn to about 10 degrees on the nav ball and then ever so slowly keep going over to the 90 degree marker as I get higher I'll leave a timestamp on the screen there for when we get into orbit but you might want to watch this one as we're, you'll see how those fuel pumps work okay let's launch this yeah this is a great ship really Here we go, about to jettison the first stage. Just like that, and if you see, the fuel tanks are still full. There we go, jettison that stage as well. Still got two FLT 800 fuel tanks full. Okay, what we're going to do now is plan a manoeuvre, which is really helpful. We're going to go into the map view, press X on the apoapsis, and now I'm controlling this with the left analogue stick, up and down. So just here, and now I'm going to press R1, and I'm going to press forwards on the left analogue stick, which is going for a prograde manoeuvre. I'll show you more about this when we plan our manoeuvre manoeuvre for the for the mon. There we go. That should be about enough. So the burn is estimated to be fifty seconds. So we want to start burning about half the time before that. So at twenty five seconds. I want to move over to where it tells me where the manoeuvre is. In about 25 seconds, I'm just going to hit burn. And that should be plenty to get us into orbit. There we go. I missed it a little bit talking like that. I'll just physics walk through this. It's nice and simple. And when you see the camera wobble, you're on your way to becoming orbital. Just like that, there we go. Let's go into the map screen. Apoaps is 76. And a peri of 75. Well, that's damn near circular. Right. Okay. So the episode was getting a bit long. So I've decided to split it into a two-parter. The next episode will be orbiting the moon, landing on it, and returning home safely. If you'd like to like, share, subscribe, maybe leave me a comment, that'd be great. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.